Imagine you've spent weeks working on a design, you've handed it off to engineering and it's about to go live. The engineers schedule a final demo to show the entire team what the product looks like and get everyone excited about what's about to go live. They start the demo and then all you see is bugs, design bugs, slight differences in the UI than what you designed, perhaps a different icon or a slightly different tint of the color that you had specified. This can be a real nightmare and I've had this happen to me in the past and it drove me crazy to see all the hard work I'd put into designing a pixel perfect design only to see that the final product is full of design bugs. I want to help you be able to catch these bugs before they go into production by doing a bug bash. Stay tuned. I've done a few videos on this channel about the handoff process and how to effectively document your design decisions and hand them off to engineering. But the design responsibility doesn't end there. Once you hand off your designs to engineering, there's still a period of time where engineers are actually building and implementing your designs. As a designer, it's still our responsibility to be kept in the loop and to see the progress of what is being built. I like to call this part of the process the QA process, which stands for quality assurance. This part of the process is about ensuring that our designs are being built to spec and that we're avoiding any potential design bugs. One of the things that should be happening throughout this process is regular demos. On my team, our engineers have a weekly demo set up and scheduled where any of the engineers can sign up to the demo and show their current work in progress of what they're building. As a designer, I always make sure to be present as designers are actually showing the work that I've designed and it's not only cool to see your designs being brought to life for the first time, but this is also a great time for you to catch any potential bugs or things that look a little bit off. Hopefully you're doing enough of these reviews and demos where your engineer is keeping you in sync and really looped into the development process of the project. However, something else that I also like to do is to run a bug bash. A bug bash can be run by either designer or the engineer, or even better, maybe you want to collaborate and run it together. During the bug bash, the whole team gets together and everyone logs in and individually goes through the new product or feature on their own to identify any potential bugs. These bugs could be UI bugs like visual design that's not quite right or they could be UX bugs where perhaps the flow or the experience is breaking or not quite working as expected. It's really important to stress test the build before you push it to product. I think the reasons are pretty obvious, but you wanna avoid a product breaking if it's live or just shipping a really poor quality experience. So to run your bug bash, I recommend putting together a template with some instructions that outlines how the bug bash is gonna go. Of course, you know me, I've created a template for you to use for your future bug bash, and it's what I'm gonna use to walk through in this video. If you wanna grab your copy of this template, which is completely free, head on to the link in the description where you can download it and use it straight away. Okay, let's open up our template here. So you can see it begins at the top with a section for blockers. This is gonna be empty to start with, but you're probably gonna fill this up over time throughout the bug bash. Blockers are any bugs that you've decided as a team must be fixed before the product can go live. So these are bugs that are blocking the push to production. Next is goals, and you're gonna to wanna to fill this out before you send this out to your team. Within the goals, you wanna outline what you wanna achieve within this bug bash. Now let's be specific here, okay? So having a goal of identify bugs is not very actionable nor specific. For example, if your feature has a terms and conditions flow in it, then we wanna make sure that that terms and conditions flow is working as expected for legal reasons. So set a goal of to test the terms and conditions flow and make sure that it's working as expected. You might have other particular flows, scenarios, states that are worth checking. Maybe there's some inputs and you wanna check the error fields or the error states of different pages or parts of the experience. Jot down anything that you can think of that you wanna make sure gets checked. The next section helps folks get kicked off with testing. So usually here, our engineers will pop in some staging or testing links to the product experience where you can log into like a demo environment and actually check and test the product live on your phone or on your computer. You may have a few different testing links, perhaps there's a few different scenarios that you wanna test or maybe you just need to have multiple testing links to support all of the different people that you want included in your test. Talk to your engineers about this because they'll be able to have better context and how to set you up for success here and get you the relevant testing links you need. All right, then we have the table of issues. Now don't get scared here. Ideally in your bug bash, 
this table is going to be light and you're not going to see very many issues. However, I've definitely had situations where we thought that we were all good and then it was only once we had the bug bash that we discovered some issues that we had previously missed. You'll want them to add a description. Make sure they also add their names so that you know who reported this issue if you want to dig in deeper. Sometimes I also encourage people to take screenshots and they can jot that in here as well. Uh, but make sure that you're also listing perhaps the type of bug, if it's a design related bug, maybe it's visual, UXC or something else entirely. And then also if relevant to your process, then perhaps you also wanna include a link to a ticket. This might be a Jira ticket or a Trello ticket or something like that. Maybe it's not created in the bug bash itself, but perhaps this is a you know good takeaway for engineering to go and do as an action item and turn all of these issues into tickets so that it's documented for the future. In my case, most of these bug bashes have been scheduled one hour meetings where we're all kind of doing this live and going through all of this together. Usually at the end of that meeting, we'll then go through the list of issues, clarify any outstanding questions, maybe get a few people to demo some of the issues if we want to get more details or more context. And then we'll go through the list of issues and decide which ones are blockers. This is where it can get really tricky as a designer because naturally I stand for really high quality when it comes to design. And if it were up to me, I would make all of the design issues a blocker for launch. Realistically though, this often doesn't happen and so you may have to do some compromises with your team. The spirit of a bug bash though is to make sure that you're collecting all of the issues to eventually be fixed. Yes, some of them will be blocking for launch, but just because it doesn't become a launch blocker doesn't mean that it never gets fixed. All right, friend, that is my experience with bug bashes. Go ahead and grab that free template. It's in the description below and Feel free to bring this to your engineer and bring this up as a topic or conversation and suggestion to the team on how we might keep the quality of the products we ship high and catch bugs before they go out to production. I'm sure your team is going to be really impressed and grateful for you to come to them with this suggestion to ensure that you're all shipping quality products. All right, designers, go out there and catch those bugs. See you in another video. Bye.